problems. And Clinton, Clinton tried to gaze in the military. He tried his best to get gays in the military. He said, I am going to be the first president in history to let gays openly serve in the military. And Congress said to Clinton, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> and the compromise they came up with was a little thing called Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Do you remember that, Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Yeah. I thought that was a game you played at Michael Jackson's house. <laughs> But, but opponents in Congress at the time said we couldn't have gays in the military because a gay soldier in a foxhole would create sexual tension. Senator Nunn actually said that. Now, I have never been in a war, admittedly, unless you count my last relationship. But I am going to go on record as saying that if you have two soldiers in a foxhole, with bullets streaming toward their heads, the last thing you're likely to hear is, Sergeant, does the sound of gunfire make you horny? <laughs> I just don't see that happening, you know? And, and you know, I, and I don't think that gay men, I think it was lesbians who was pushing that whole gays in the military thing. I don't think gay men were that eager to go to the military. <laughs> I think they were perfectly happy going to the Banana Republic. <laughs> or, I don't know, maybe that was just me. You know, I don't know. But I'll tell you this, if gay men were eager to go to the military, it was so they could march. <laughs> no, gay men love to march. We love it! We march in parades, we march in protests, we marched in the high school band. <laughs> Every straight man in this audience, there's one, should get down on his knees and thank gay men. Well, may, well, maybe not on your knees. But, but, but you should be grateful to gay men, because without us, you would not have had a decent halftime. We made that halftime for you. So you really owe us a debt of gratitude for that. You know?